in this part of the vapor and combined power cycle lecture I'm going to talk about another way to improve the efficiency of a ranking cycle it is a reheating scheme the reheating scheme in the ranking cycle is that you will have multi-step turbine okay you will not expand the steam in a single stage turbine but rather you expand from high pressure to intermediate pressure like this and then you reheat the steam to a higher superheated temperature again and then you expand further to low pressure so you can see you have a reheater between two turbine stage here okay you can see that the benefit that you would obtain from the reheat scheme is that you will get more work okay so you can see if you compare with the simple ranking cycle where you have only single expansion step the dashed line just that I have just drawn here when you have the reheating and you have another expansion step you can see you have more area in the cycle more area means more W net so you have increased W net okay and the other advantage that you would get when you have a reheating scheme is that the turbine exit condition the turbine exit condition here you would get less liquid formation less liquid formation okay which is good um, the turbine the turbine blade will not be damaged by the um, the high velocity liquid okay so this is the advantages of using the reheating scheme you have the better efficiency you have increased network output and you also get less liquid formation at the turbine exit as well right now let's have a look at the uh, calculation of the thermal efficiency you can see that the thermal efficiency can be calculated by using the same concept what we get divided by what we give W net divided by Q in but in the reheating scheme here W net would be changed W net would come from the turbine work from both stage here you have W turbine 1 you have um, W turbine 2 second stage turbine and you subtract with the pumping work W pump okay Q in will also be different as well okay Q in you have the Q in through the main boiler which is H3 minus H2 this is Q boiler and you also have Q reheat H5 minus H4 this is Q reheat okay so you can see that you have uh, more terms that you have seen in the calculation of efficiency in the simple ranking cycle okay you have more turbine stages you have Q reheat as well okay so you have to be very careful when you calculate the thermal efficiency of the reheating cycle let's have a look at these examples in this example we are going to compare between the simple ranking cycle simple ideal ranking cycle and the reheat cycle 
okay we are going to com compare both of them okay for both of them here uh, we operate the boiler at the same pressure for megapascal this is the boiler pressure and the boiler exit temperature is also fixed at 400 degrees Celsius as well similar in both cases the condenser pressure is at 10 kilopascal now for the reheat the reheat takes place at 0 0.4 megapascal and the steam leaves the reheater at 400 degrees Celsius so it would be reheat back to 400 degrees Celsius before expand in the second stage again okay this is for the reheat okay we want to compare the thermal efficiency Nita thermal and we want to combat the turbine exit quality or the uh, vapor fraction at the turbine exit x at the turbine exit okay turbine exit okay and the number that are shown below here um, are the result okay efficiency of the simple cycle without the reheat and the cycle with reheat you can see that efficiency increased just 0 0.6 percent okay we can see just a small increase in efficiency but you can see that the vapor fraction vapor fraction of the steam at the turbine exit increased from around 82 percent to around 97 percent it means that the liquid formation reduced significantly okay liquid formation reduce significantly okay right then now I'm going to show you the details of the calculation I'm going to start with the simple um, ideal ranking cycle first simple ideal ranking cycle okay simple ideal ranking cycle Now I'm going to sketch the cycle on a TS diagram. Okay, so we have um, steam dome like this. Okay, and the cycle, ideal cycle, start from one at the sat liquid. This is number one, sat liquid. It will enter the pump. Okay to number two here okay and then enter the boiler okay so the temperature will increase to the saturation temperature okay and we have a phase change okay to the sat vapor and then it will become superheat to number three okay and after that it will be expand okay to number four okay and then it will be condensed back to number one again okay so the cycle will be more or less like this okay my apologies for not quite a uh, good drawing okay So you have uh, the simple ideal ranking cycle operating between two pressure value. The first one is at 10 kilopascal. The second one is at 4 
thousand kilo pascal. Okay. Then you can see that um, for the point one, two, three, and four. Okay, you can see that point number one is fully defined because you know the pressure and you know that it would be sad liquid. P1 is 10 kilopascal and it is sad liquid. So number one is actually fully defined. Okay, similar to number three, you know that number three we have the pressure P3 and you already know that temperature here is at 400 degrees Celsius from the problems. So number three is also fully defined as well. Okay. So you have to determine the condition at number two and number four in order to calculate the energy transfer in each process. Okay. You have um, you have W pump in here, W pump, you have the Q in in process 2, 3, you have W turbine out in process 3, 4, uh, you have Q out in process 4, 1. Okay. So if you start from each process, okay, and we then we move on to the next process in the sequence. We start from process one, two first. Process one, two. All right. In process one, two, we know that it's the compression of incompressible fluid. Okay, it's our liquid. So we can approximate the work required in this process by using the equation that we have learned before. We approximate the work of the pump by calculating from the specific volume of the liquid multiplied by the pressure change P2 minus P1. Okay, so um, the specific volume we, we want here would be the specific volume of the sat liquid at 10 kilopascal. So at 10 kilopascal sat. Okay, we get V1 equal to Vf equal to 0 0.00101 cubic meter per kilogram. Okay. So you substitute all the value that you have. You can calculate the pumping work required. That would be 0 0.00101 multiplied by 4000 minus 10. And that would be 4.03 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so this is the pumping work that you require. Now, we can then move to calculate the enthalpy at point number two. So, from energy balance around the pump. Energy balance around the pump. Okay. You have W12 equal to H2 minus H1. So H2 can be calculated from H1 plus W12. And that would be 191.81 plus 4.03 that you have just calculated. That would be 195. Point 85 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. Now you know enthalpy at point number two. You can then move on to calculate the heat input in process two three. 
in process 2, 3. From the energy balance, you get Q in equal to H3 minus H2. Okay. H3 is the enthalpy of the superheated vapor at 4 megapascal and 400 degrees Celsius. You can get this value from the superheated steam table. And that would be 3214.5 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. You can now calculate Q in. Q in would be H3 3214.5 minus H2 195.84. Okay, which equal 3018.66 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, that is your Q in. Now we move on to the next process, which is the expansion of process 3-4. Okay, process 3-4 is an isentropic expansion. Okay, isentropic expansion. So it means that with the isentropic process, entropy at the outlet would be equal to entropy at the inlet. S4 equal to S3. Entropy at number 3 would be entropy of the superheated vapor at condition number 3 at 4 megapascal and 400 degrees Celsius. You also get this value from the superheated steam table here. And that would be 6.7 seven seven one four kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin okay so you know the entropy at the turbine outlet now you also know the pressure so you have to check first whether number four here point number four here lies in the two phase region or lies in the vapor phase region so you have to compare the entropy value with the entropy of the sat liquid and sat vapor at 10 kilopascal. So at 10 kilopascal, okay, you got SF entropy of sat liquid to be 0 0.6492 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin you've got the entropy of sat vapor to be 8.1488 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so when you compare S4 with SG and SF at 10 kilopascal, you can see that your S4 lies between SF and SG. SG. So it means that number 4 lies in the two phase region or number 4 is the mixed phase. Okay, number 4 is the mixed phase. So when is the mixed phase? It means that the property will depend on the vapor fraction and the liquid fraction. So you have to determine the fraction of the vapor first before calculating the enthalpy of the mixture. So we want to calculate vapor fraction at number 4. Okay. So the, the mixture property that you know at this moment is the entropy value. So you can write entropy value of the mixture equal to the vapor fraction multiplied by the entropy of the set vapor okay, plus the liquid fraction 
1 minus x4 multiplied by entropy of the sat liquid. Okay. When you rearrange this equation, you get x4 equal to s4 minus sf divided by sg minus sf. Okay. You already have all the values. So you just substitute entropy 6.7714 minus 0 0.6492 divided by 8.1488 minus 0 0.6492 and that would be 0 0.816 Okay, so you can see uh, this is the vapor fraction at the turbine exit in the simple ideal Rankine cycle. You can now use this um, vapor fraction to calculate the enthalpy of uh, this mixture. So H4 H4 can be calculated from X4 Hg plus 1 minus X4 Hf. Okay, and at 10 kilopascal, you can also get the value of enthalpy of sat liquid and enthalpy of sat vapor from the steam table. Hf is 191.81 kilojoule per kilogram and Hg is 2583.91 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, substitute all the value, you get H4 equal to 0 0.816 multiplied by 2583.91 plus 1 minus 0 0.816 multiplied by 191.81 okay so the enthalpy at the turbine exit would be 2143 0.76 kilojoule per kilogram okay so you can now calculate the turbine work W turbine would be H3 minus H4 which would be 3214.5 minus 2143.76 which is 1070.73 kilojoule per kilogram okay now you can calculate the thermal efficiency of this simple ideal Rankine cycle Thermal efficiency would be W turbine minus W pump that you have calculated previously divided by Q in. Okay, that would be 1070.73 minus 4.03 divided by 3018.66 which is Q in so the result would be 0 0.353 or 35.3 percent efficiency okay so you can see that we have complete the calculation to determine the vapor fraction and the thermal efficiency for the simple ideal Rankine cycle. Now let's move on 
to the reheat cycle. For the reheat cycle, okay, for the reheat cycle, you can see that the shape of the cycle on TS diagram would be changed. Okay, so you have one, two point two. Okay, two two point three, like this one. But in the reheat cycle, we don't expand all the way down to the condensing pressure. We will expand to an intermediate pressure. Okay, from three, you expand to four which is intermediate pressure. So intermediate pressure is at 400 kilopascal and then you heat it back to the same temperature here. This is T5. Okay, this is number 5. Okay, and then you expand it for the last time. Okay, down here. Okay, so your cycle shape will look like this. This is number six. Okay. So you have three pressure values. Okay. You have four thousand kilopascal. You have four hundred kilopascal. And you have here, which is 10 kilopascal, you have three operating pressure values. Okay, number four to number five is your reheat cycle. Okay, and T5 is at 400 degree Celsius. Okay, now you can see that process one, two, and two, three will remain the same as we have done for the simple ideal ranking cycle. Process three, four, four, five, and five, six will be different from the previous one. So we start by calculations of process three, four first. Okay. In process three, four, it is still isentropic. So entropy at the turbine exit would be equal to entropy at the turbine inlet. S4 equal to S3. We already have S3. Okay, so S3 is 6.7714 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, now at point number four, it means that you have two pieces of information. You have P4 equal to 400 kilopascal and you have entropy S4 at 6.7714. You can determine the other properties at this point. Okay, you can determine um, enthalpy, you can determine uh, the temperature as well at this point. So at this point, you have to check first whether it lies within the two-phase region or it lies within the wafer phase region by comparing the entropy at this point with the entropy at the saturation condition. So at 400 kilopascal, at 400 kilopascal, you check the value of entropy of the sat liquid and entropy of sat vapor. So you have Sg equal to 6.8955 okay, kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. You have Sf equal to 1.7765 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so you can see directly that S4 here, S4 
lies between SF and SG. It means that point number four lies in the two phase region. Number four is in the mixed phase region. The mixed phase region here. So it means that the property at this point will have to be calculated based on the weight average between the vapor and the liquid. So you have to calculate the vapor fraction at this point. Calculate the vapor fraction uh, at this point, x4. Okay, so x4 would be equal to S4 minus SF divided by SG minus SF. You have all the value that you need. Okay, just substitute 6.7714 minus 1.7765 divided by 6.8. 9.55 minus 1.7765 okay so you will have um, vapor fraction at this point to be 0 0.976 okay 0 0.976 this is vapor fraction at the first stage turbine exit okay now you have the vapor fraction at number four you can then use it to calculate the enthalpy at this point as well so we will calculate the enthalpy at point number four calculate h4 okay so h4 will be equal to x4 hg plus 1 minus x4 hf okay at number 4 the pressure is at 400 kilopascal okay enthalpy of the sat liquid would be 604.66 kilojoule per kilogram and enthalpy of sat vapor would be 2738.1 kilojoule per kilogram from the steam table okay you substitute the hf and hg and x4 in the uh, first equation on this slide you will get h4 H4 would be 2686.9 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, this is H4. Once you know H4, you can calculate the work that you would obtain from the first turbine stage. Okay, W turbine stage. First turbine stage would be W34, which is h3 minus h4 and that would be 3214.5 minus 2686.9 okay so the work will be uh, 527.6 kilojoule per kilogram Okay. Now we can then move on to the next process, which is process four five. In process four five is the reheating. Reheating at constant pressure. Okay. So you will reheat okay at 400 kilopascal 
back to uh, 400 degrees Celsius so at point number five which is 400 kilopascal and 400 degrees Celsius you can determine the enthalpy values okay you can get the enthalpy and entropy value from the superheated steam table so you have H5 of 3273.9 okay kilojoule per kilogram and entropy at point number 5 would be 7.9003 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin okay so yeah you now know H5 you can then calculate the Q reheat Q reheat would be Q45 which is H5 minus H4 from the energy balance so Q reheat would be 3273.9 minus 2686.9 and that would be 587 kilojoule per kilogram okay so this is process 45 or Q reheat All right now we move on to the next process which is process 56 okay five six okay process five six is the second stage expansion this is also isentropic as well so entropy at the outlet would be equal to entropy at the inlet s6 equal to s5 which is 7.9003 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin okay so we have to check whether point number six lie within the two-phase region or not we have to compare the entropy value with the entropy of sat liquid and sat vapor so at point number six the pressure is at 10 kilo pascal okay from the steam table you have entropy of the sat liquid to be 0 0.6492 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin and entropy of the sat vapor would be 8.1488 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin okay now you can easily see that S6 lies between SF and SG at 10 kilopascal so it means that number six lie within the two-phase region okay or six will be mixed phase the property will depends on the weight average values okay so you have to calculate the vapor fraction at this point first x6 equal to s6 minus sf divided by sg minus sf okay you have all the value that you need 7.9003 minus 0 0.6492 divided by 8.1488 minus 0. 6492 and that would be 0 0.9668 so this is the actual vapor fraction at the final turbine exit okay 0 0.9668 you can use this vapor fraction to calculate the enthalpy of the mixture at number six H6 will be 
x6 hg plus 1 minus x6 hf okay and you already have hg and hf at 10 kilopascal okay hg and hf would be at 10 kilopascal okay you substitute all the values you will get h6 at 2504.49 kilojoule per kilogram okay so you can now calculate the turbine work in the second step w turbine in the second step would be equal to w56 which is h5 minus h6 and that would be 769.41 kilojoule per kilogram okay so you have all the turbine work okay and the Curie heat that you need now you can calculate the thermal efficiency of the reheat cycle now the thermal efficiency of the reheat cycle will be um, W net divided by Q in so that would be W turbine 1 plus W turbine 2 minus W pump and divided by um, Q in which would be Q boiler plus Q reheater okay so it would be W34 plus W56 minus W12 divided by Q Two three plus Q four five. Okay, you actually have uh, all the value that you need. So you may just substitute um, five two seven point six plus seven six nine point four one minus four point o three. Okay divided by 3018.66 plus 5.87 so the thermal efficiency of this reheat cycle would be 0 0.3586 or 35.86 percent okay all right now you can see that with the reheat cycle I will redraw the cycle on TS diagram now I'm going to redraw the um, cycles the reheat cycle on TS diagram again in this example okay so you have um, um, the steam dome okay like this okay so your cycle will be um, from one to two okay here okay and then it will enter the boiler so it will move up like this and we it will undergo the phase change in the boiler okay and then it will become superheat at number three okay this is number three the first expansion it will expand to number four and we have already calculated that number four is in the two-phase region okay so number four 
would be here. This is number 4. Right. Now, to reheat from number 4 to number 5, it means that from the two-phase region at this point here, you have to move to the set vapor first. You have to move to the set vapor first, and then you will follow the uh, superheated line okay, to number 5, which is at the same temperature as number 3. This is number 5. And then you expand in the final step from number five to number six. Okay, this is number six. Okay, and from number six you will move back. Okay, to number one. Here. Okay, so this is the correct shape of the uh, reheat Rankin cycle. Okay, 3, 2, 4, 4, 2, 5, okay, 5 to 6, like this. Okay, be very careful when drawing point number 4 and number 6. They both have to be in the two phase region. Okay, so this is the um, cycle. Uh, of this example. Alright then.